The movie begins with a presentation by Faraday, who only want to know how humans got to Earth. Shortly before, an unknown object feels through deep space to fall to Earth. Inside was Faraday, only with an alien appearance, but in just a minute he takes human form. One day Faraday tells people that he has found a new step in evolution, but before his discovery he must tell an amazing story. As soon as Faraday came to Earth, he lost his family, but he set out to recreate what he had lost by learning to be human. He then makes his way to the out shop, where he is overcome by incredible thirst, with the policeman notices and points a gun at him. Seeing the hose sticking out of Faraday's mouth, the policeman slowly pulls it out, without understanding why it does not end. As soon as the policeman pulled the hose out of him, he began to repeat the words, forcing the policeman to shoot him with an electric shock. Next we see that Faraday is in the police station, where he receives a lot of new information, from the sound of butterfly fluttering to the movement of the lips. Faraday tells the officer that he has a mission, complete with the exact coordinates, but they are distracted by a phone call, which Faraday hears perfectly well. This clearly shocked the woman, then she wonders where he is from, and Faraday point to the sky naming the planet Entia. The officer assumes he is a madman, and she needs someone to pick up him. Faraday says the name is Justin Falls. She works as a toxic waste cleaner only to use the money to buy medicine. She also has a young daughter, and a father for whom she needs to buy pills because he is terminally ill. This forces her to ask for an even more difficult job, but she certainly doesn't like what she is offered. She receives a call from the police, she has no idea who the man is. But Faraday immediately repeats the scientific text which was written by her. At the same time, their mission coincides. In the beginning, he was ordered to find Justine, because she is the closest to the synthesis in the world, but she lacked a very small detail, the existence of which she simply does not know. Justine still thinks he is crazy and just leaves. Faraday also leaves the police station. Upon reaching the pawn shop, a huge number of gold rings erupt from his mouth. For these rings, he could be paid $25,000, but the woman wants to buy them for $10,000. Eventually, Faraday convinces the woman to buy the rings for his price. A little later, he is overcome by members from his home plan, but he is distracted by a strong wall. Justine notices all this and decides to help him, after which Faraday still manages to convince her to help him. Justine enters the coordinates, which are about 200 miles away. As soon as Faraday gets in the car, he does not understand where the tanks are, because that is where he shall travel. During the trip, Faraday fell asleep in a moment to be transported to his memories, where he survived on a destroyed planet with his family. A little later, they stop at the gas station, where they can find a container of water, in which Faraday has dipped his head. The gas station worker is confused and Faraday buys the container. He also inquires about the horse, because on his planet there are predators. Later, they stop outside a small diner, where Faraday behaves strangely, causing Justine to declare that he is autistic. She also explains that such people are bad at making connections, but Faraday assures her that no one makes connections, but only exist within themselves. Faraday gives her a formula from the third millennium that was given to him by a friend who is now on Earth as Thomas Newton. A little later, the police follow them, and Justine has a gun, which makes her try to leave Faraday. He says his friend made a mistake that won't keep them alive, because there are almost no clouds in the sky. They finally arrive at the right place where there is absolutely nothing. Further they tell Justine that he is an alien, and that she will save his race from extinction. These words scare Justine and she leaves. At that moment, huge clouds begin to form in the distance. She decides to save Faraday, who has already entered the center of the tornado. He moves to his friend who assures him that people with X-ray vision are looking for him, but Faraday doesn't understand since he was supposed to return to their home planet. Thomas assures him that he must complete his mission, and first of all he must take back the company that was stolen from him. The storm ends and Justine finally sees Faraday's true face which scares Justine even more. Faraday walks back to the diner. At the same time, CIA agent Spencer received data that is 40 years old. A couple of hours ago, they detected a signal coming from a tornado. 45 years ago, in the same place, everything was exactly as it is now, and the only person who knows all this is still alive. Faraday rushes to the airport. He realizes that he has no documents, so he takes the document from the taxi driver. Suddenly at the airport, he is in great pain, and all the equipment fails, at which point even his disguise fails. A little later, Justine is called to the police. Justine quickly picks up Faraday because she can forget the day she realized that she was facing an alien, but she still doesn't want to fly to Seattle to build some kind of machine. But in Alaska, Spencer was able to find a lonely house. It is where the man he once lives, and the smoke clearly says he is in the house, but Spencer is taken by surprise. The man immediately ties him to a chair, ordering him to open his eyes while checking the contents of his hand. He knows perfectly well about the aliens, except that it all makes him crazy. 
Spencer tries to explain that a couple of days ago a signal came out of the tornado and his name was in the papers. Seeing that the man is insane, Spencer tried to get out. The man talks some nonsense and ends his life. Further listening carefully to the prayer before the meal, only he does not understand who they are talking to. Suddenly the whole conversation turns into an argument. Further insists that the man who is coming to the end exhausts all his useful properties and that he is still alive only because of just potential. She refuses to listen and orders Ferdy to sit in the car. As soon as everyone has left, Ferdy sneaks into the man's room to touch him, and thus he takes the disease away from the old man. He immediately begins to feel well.